Welcome to the 100th episode of the Untapped podcast and this is a pretty special episode because I have brought in my lovely partner Josh, Josh Vile, to ask me the questions that you asked. So I said ask me anything um, and we're just going to go full steam ahead with questions that you asked for this episode. I'm an open book, Josh gets to pose the questions in any way and I'm going to reply and maybe he will... Uh, you know, jam with me on this because he knows me so well. So let's get started. Josh, thank you so much for being on my podcast today and in my interview. I know it's not your normal state. Usually you wants to be not behind the camera or in front of the camera, I should say. So let's go. Okay. Thanks for having me, Natalie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Do you believe it's possible to be an overnight success or for major shift in income to happen in an instant? 100% not. Isn't that nice and positive of me? I do think that so much of it is the groundwork that got you to where you are now or where you want to be. You can't rush that. It's never instantaneous. In a world of instantaneous gratification, I think it's been so drummed into us that that success can just happen. And I don't I just don't believe it's true. What's the best thing about being an entrepreneur business owner? What's the hardest thing and what's your favorite part? Actually, let's just tell me what's the best thing. What's the best thing about... Hi, you know? Siobhan in Ireland. Um, the best thing, honestly, I was just thinking about it today, is the fact that you can work your own schedule. Like It's, it's the freedom that you get in how you want to turn up, what you want to work on, where you want to work from. I still find that something I'm incredibly grateful for. Like, I think that absolute freedom to work on your own terms and do the work that lights you up is the best part of being an entrepreneur. What's your favorite part of your business? Uh, honestly, the people. So I care deeply about my customers and my clients um, and my audience. And not that I crave or live for feedback, but when you have those moments, especially in courses or when you're teaching and sharing things with them when you get that feedback that you helped transform something in their life or you touched their life or they learned something or they feel more confident or they had a breakthrough even though it's not necessarily you that got it for them it's 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 just one of the most rewarding feelings and it's the thing that keeps you going on the days when you're like oh um it's that people interaction and seeing their accomplishments and seeing their success and just seeing them um do what they really want is an amazing privilege to be part of that and and having a little role to play in it i've got one here from rachel ann harding uh, hi rachel and what are your top three favorite meals you've eaten on your travels uh i would say greece back in the 90s with my family i just loved the simplicity and tastefulness of the good old greek meal with the fresh bread and the olive oil and the souvlaki and the tzatziki and the, the grilled meats, just so super yum, and the salads. Um, I loved eating in Thailand. I just, I Thai fried rice and curries all the time. I just love the flavors there, especially eating from the street vendors, which everybody tells you not to do because you get a stomach bug. But I really liked a lot of the things that they did on the street. Who Natalie <laughs> was prior to the suitcase entrepreneur? What helped mold you as a young woman and become who you are today? Where did you grow up? What were your parents like? What kind of student were you? Uh, have you always exhibited entrepreneurial traits or is that something that evolved over time? Basically, what's your story? I'm always talking about your sweet spot, that intersection between what you're good at or great at, what you enjoy doing, what you love doing, what people will pay you for and what's meaningful to you. And if I look back on my history, like all the things that I loved in school, journalism and language and English and art history and classics, um, which often involved travel, then into university doing a tourism and service management degree and a business degree in IT, like every single thing that I did and I was interested in ultimately became the perfect combo for the suitcase entrepreneur business and what I do now. Growing up in New Zealand, I often talk about with massively strong female role models. And then obviously my parents, big travelers, just finished reading my mum's memoir. I mean, she traveled a lot. My dad traveled a lot. Together they traveled a lot. And when we were born, they just took us with them. So I'm forever grateful that my love of travel definitely came from them just opening our eyes to the amazingness of being able to travel the world and experience other cultures. When can we buy Suck It Up Princess is what Seaside Jen wants to know. It's Seaside Jen from Instagram. Sorry, I don't know your real name. Um, I love that question. So actually, 
Uh, it will be coming out at the end of March. March 30th is the release date, but you'll be able to pre-order it later in January. It's really just up to me. I've got the final manuscript sitting in a box over over there in my office. I just need to go through with a red pen and mark up the final stuff. What have, what have you learned about writing over three books? Like if you think about the stuff you know now, what would you tell your old self um, when you're trying to write your first one? So I think the biggest thing that's changed for me is just now I know that you'll go through all those feelings of, oh my God, is anybody even going to read this? Is this even good? And you'll have days where you're like, yes, I'm on fire and days where you're like, I can't write a thing. And I think that's quite common to a lot of authors and friends that I know who have those same feelings, like literally to be partway through a book and go, oh my goodness, like this is terrible or why? And then you pick it up another day and you're like, hmm. This is actually pretty good. I'll let you know when I do the final, final read through of the manuscript, what the verdict is. What gives you the most joy in working with clients? Oh, just seeing them get out of their own way. That one's for Osman. Um, yeah, I think just seeing them have those aha moments for something that they might have been stuck on for ages, especially with my clients in the 10K club, my beautiful queens. What's one thing that frustrates you about working with clients? <laughs> I think it's... Um, the clients who kind of remain helpless. You know, I fortunately don't find many clients like that and we all have those moments, but at the end of the day, you're fully responsible for your success or your failure and it's all about your attitude and your mindset and I can help with so much, but if you're not prepared to turn up and give it your all, there's nothing that I can do to get you there. So I really love it when clients have that great attitude because they're so much easier to work with. What does it take to, for someone to go from no idea or no business to earning 10k a month running their own business? Yeah, I actually really like that question because I feel like that's my jam. Um, I think probably 90% of it is mindset. So beginners can start out with very, very little, an idea, a hope and a dream. But if they fully believe in the fact that they will get there, that they will make it happen and that they have a bigger belief for how they want that to look, they're going to they're gonna actually achieve that versus somebody who's like always coming up with ideas and never acting on them. And if I think back to when I started, sometimes that beginner mindset and not knowing what I didn't know was the best possible thing. What are you most proud of in your business to date and when are we doing our next Bali retreat? <laughs> Hi, Osman in Scotland there. What am I most proud of in my business to date? Starting the business and making it a success, especially my first business. Um the suitcase entrepreneur like that was huge for me to go out on my own and do that and actually like to this date still being an entrepreneur almost 12 years later um so Osman yeah I think literally becoming an entrepreneur was my proudest moment um giving up the corporate life taking that big leap and risk and heading to from London to Vancouver um and just believing in myself I don't think I have any final thoughts just again 100 is a real milestone to reach it's kind of flown by actually um, and I'm just super proud of the Untapped podcast, the people who have celebrated it with me, been on the show, given their all, um, amazing guests, amazing content, and to every single listener out there who's rated it, reviewed it, who feeds back to me when they love an episode. Um, it means the world to me because we sit behind a mic and talk to it as if you know there's one person listening, so it's really wonderful when you get actual feedback because then you're like, oh, this counts. And there's somebody out there listening in. So thank you so much. No, thank you. And you can find this episode at nataliesisson.com forward slash podcast or forward slash 100, like 100. It's very exciting to write that in. More goodness in 2021, I'm sure. Thanks, babe. Kia ora.